As we continue to talk about drought, one of the most important things to keep in mind is soil moisture. But this is a very complex system. Here to help us understand how complex that is, is Jason Ward, an Extension Soil Management Specialist. Jason, talk to us first of all, you've, you've pulled a core today. What, what's this machine you're working with? Uh, this is our hydraulic uh, soil coring machine. Let's take a look at this one here and show us what are we seeing in this core. All right. Well, uh, of course, here's the top, and you can see the residue at the surface. And then we'll generally, in a soil profile, we'll have a nice uh, lighter, we hope to have a lighter textured soil at the surface. And here we have a loam. And then we go pretty quickly into a uh, clay loam. And that's essentially how soils are built. We like to have them have an, a medium texture, loam type material at the surface. And then they'll pick up clay as we go downward. Now I assume some of that, that, that construction of the soil is part of why it takes so much lo longer and harder to fill that deeper profile. We're talking about a two inch moisture versus say a 24 inch moisture. Yeah, like for instance in this soil, we have in the top two inches we have this, this loamy material. It's going to hold a pretty good amount of water, uh, plant available water. Uh, we have to remember there's, there's different forms of water. We have plant available water and then we have water that's so strongly held to the soil that the plants can't extract it. Loams have the maximum amount, maximum amount of plant available water when they're moist. In contrast, uh, when we get down to one of these, uh, you know, the, the clay ear material, it, you can see that it, it's pretty soft because it's got some moisture in it, but this moisture is not very easily extracted by the plant. So uh, we want a nice deep topsoil that holds lots of, or lots of water and a loam, and then the plants can extract this, material, this water at the subsoil, uh, but it's much more difficult to get. Not only do the roots have to grow deeper to get it, but then it's in this clay material and it's uh, much more difficult to pull water out of this clay than it is the loam. Now, of course, this time of year, the part we're really excited about and really want to see the moisture is up here in that first few inches. Exactly. For establishment, right? Yeah, exactly. During establishment, uh, during the early growing uh, period of any crop, whether it's grass like what we see here, um, which is in the spring or where we're looking at wheat, we want moisture at the near surface to get it to germinate and to elongate roots down into the deep profile. Right. And this part is what the plant's going to use later on in, in, the, exactly. in its lifespan. We, we, need, we need good growing and good root uh, growing conditions at the surface to where we can penetrate this. Uh, one thing we'll often see, um, for instance, is we may have sufficient moisture at the surface and then we simply don't get any, and, and then perhaps we have a dry zone um, here at say a foot to 24 inches, a foot to two feet and then we'll have moisture at depth. This moisture uh, deep in the profile is not gonna do us much good if we can't ever uh, get this one to two foot zone moistened because roots simply won't penetrate it. Now let's talk about the field in general because I mean that's a very close up look. Mm -hmm. But as we look across this field, you've got quite a, a com complex soil system here and yeah. a lot of different conditions as you move through it. You have these shorter grasses uh, on one side and then you start to get into some taller grasses. These taller grasses are more effective at, at extracting deep moisture. Mm -hmm. And so we can um, uh, assume that the soil is going to be much deeper uh, under the tall grasses than under these short grasses. Right. For one, the short grasses are more drought tolerant. The shallower soil is going to be more droughty than this, the deeper soil. So this really does tell you a lot about the soil going on underneath just to get in your field and look at the different areas of it. Yeah. And one thing I noticed this summer, well, this summer as well as way back in the, in the spring when the wheat was growing and making grain is you could look out across the wheat field and you could actually see the soil and that you'd see wheat, the wheat crop dying in small areas mm -hmm. and that would be the same thing we're seeing here. Here we see it in vegetative cover type but in the wheat field we see it in the drought, um, the impacts of drought on the crop. Um, but you can very, very well see it in a drought condition as we've seen this year. Well, now we're seeing what it looks like in pasture. Can we go take a core in some cropland and see oh, how yeah. that looks? Yeah, that'll be real interesting. Let's go do okay. that. You know, we always think that wheat's a, a shallow rooted crop. Um, 
but it can grow. I've, I've seen wheat roots as, as deep as four feet, and you can see these small roots. The thing about it is there's not a lot of them. Right. Whereas a taprooted crop, it may, it, that taproot may extend down two feet and then start to, to put some fine roots down, but they'll be much more um, numerous and larger roots, and so the taprooted crops are more efficient at extracting the water, but the wheat does have roots down there. Let's talk briefly uh, about a few of these different crops that we think about. Obviously, we're, we're talking about wheat now. Mm -hmm. uh, when we talk about tap roots, first thing that jumps to my mind is sunflowers. I mean, they've got a real big tap root on them. Yeah. Um, what about some of the others? What about canola? How does it work? It soil? would be similar uh, in that it has a tap root, um, but sunflower, canola, uh, sesame is another crop that, that Oklahoma is looking at that's tap rooted. Very efficient. And when you look out in those fields, they'll, they'll maintain their greenness throughout a severe drought. They may not grow and they may not produce much, but they'll stay alive. Part of that is their heat tolerance, but then another part of it is they, they are extracting water from a much deeper uh, profile than what, say, wheat would be. Um, corn and sorghum, they have different drought tolerance, both because of their, their um, tolerance to temperatures as well as as their ability to extract deep moisture. Let's talk real quick if we could. I mean, we're obviously, this is a, a fallow field. Yeah. So how is the, the moisture retention and recharge different here versus say in the pasture? Well here, there, through the summer, we, we, we wanna keep this field clean. If, if we're going in a wheat fallow rotation as what is um, maintained here, we wanna keep it clean of weeds um, and that would minimize the deep soil moisture usage. You know, if this was a no-till with a residue, it'd improve our infiltration of individual rains um, and, and get a little more moisture. But the fact of the matter is, is, is we haven't had much rain, and so our deep moisture is pretty, pretty well played out. Um, and, and this moisture was extracted. You know, we didn't lose moisture at depth down here through the summer. At, you know, we're two feet and it's bone dry. This moisture was lost in the spring during the last crop. Good information. As always, thank you for, for joining us today and sharing this with us. Mm -hmm. Jason Warren, our Extension Soil Management Specialist. Mm -hmm.